Hey guys, check this out. I'm really excited today because I found something I had no idea existed. It's um, the negative resistance region of certain transistors when you bias them in a certain way that you can utilize to make a very simple single transistor relaxation oscillator such as this one right here. Just got a blue LED flashing at low frequency, but let me first explain how this came about. I started out with these this box of transistors right here, they're SWB2433, and this is the paper that I came with, came with the box. There is no other documentation, and apparently Texas Instruments themselves don't have any documentation for this thing either. They say it might be a custom part, so really the only way to learn about them is to throw them on a curve tracer, like I have here. So I have actually two transistors on the curve tracer. One is the, the SWB uh, 2433, and then a, just an ordinary um, 2N34, wait. Yeah, two, I mean 2N3904, very common small signal transistor. So I got that on there looking at the, the SWB and in the forward bias region, very normal curves going on here, very typical to the 3904. You know, very basic stuff that you learn about in your basic electronics course in your textbook and everything. But in the negative region here on the SWB2433, look at that. It goes negative and then shoots back here. We have voltage on the horizontal and current on the vertical, and so that's negative resistance right there. Now the 3904 does not have any negative resistance here in the negative region, but if I just make a quick change, I'm going to reverse bias both of these and leave the base floating. Okay, so now I just got current going into the emitter and out of the collector of these two NPN BJTs and we're looking at the 3904 and the SWB and you can see they both have a negative resistance region. Here's the the origin, the zero point, and so here you can see the voltage rises up to almost 8 volts before it, and then the current rises a little bit too, let me increase the scale. So we go up to 8 volts and about 4 milliamps, and then it suddenly jumps down, and we go down to about 5 volts, and then it kind of stabilizes on 4 volts, and the 3904 has that same region, but just that same negative resistance when it's reversed bias, but just not quite as exaggerated as it is for the other. So I'm going to put a 2N2222 in here, and you'll see that one also has that negative resistance region. So that's really good for you guys, because that means you don't need these SWB2433 extremely rare transistor that nobody has any data for. I did find some surplus, some surplus joint online that sells them, but um, no other information at all. But anyway, that's, like I said, it's good news that it works on this one because that's a very common transistor and you can buy it and use it and you probably already have it in your transistor bins already. So you can make very simple single transistor relaxation oscillator just like that one. So here's the schematic. I got it running on a variable power supply. Right now it's tuned to about 15 volts and I have also a decade box and right now that's tuned to 1.6 kilo ohms. You know, any it'll the, the resistance if you make the circuit, the resistance will vary. It only only operates on a very specific range of resistance and a very specific range of voltage. It won't 
won't operate for any voltage or any resistance. The capacitor, however, you can put just about any capacitor you want. That all depends on what frequency you want with this, with this um, half hertz oscillation here, approximately one pulse every two seconds. Um, I got a 1000 microfarad cap. And of course, if you want higher frequency, then you just put a smaller cap in there. And then you can see how it operates here. The voltage source charges the cap through the, uh, through the resistor until we reach a certain point where the transistor starts to become conductive. It goes from open circuit to, to almost a closed circuit uh, with a 4 volt or 6 volt drop across it. I mean, it becomes conducting basically, but you know, it takes a certain voltage to become conducting, and then when it does conduct, it really conducts, and it, that's that's the negative resistance part, and that's what allows this very simple oscillator to work. So once it goes into negative resistance, then the capacitor just drains a whole bunch of charge through the LED and through the transistor into ground until finally it just stops conducting and then the cap charges again and the cycle continues and you can use that to make a sawtooth wave i've got a another circuit here this one operating at a high frequency and i'm just looking at the voltage from ground to the emitter of the transistor there's no there's no other components no led just a single resistor, a cap, and the reverse bias transistor. And ground is right here. And we're looking at, what, two volts per division. So our sawtooth is actually going from about six and a half volts to eight volts. We're operating on a 12 volt battery power source. The frequency is about 800 hertz. And one possible application for this is an audio tone generator, like I have here. Let me zoom out. So we've got, there's my 12 volt battery, the oscillator circuit, and the resistance is actually a 5K pot, and the speaker, which is not currently in the circuit. Let me take this short circuit out of here. All right, so now I got the speaker in series with the transistor just like the LED is in the other circuit. And I think I'm using the 3904. You can see as I turn up the, the pot, frequency also increases until, until finally the, the resistance gets so low that it just doesn't operate anymore. It takes like I said, it only operate over a certain range of resistance. And the really neat thing about this is that it's basically a low voltage alternative to the neon, neon lamp relaxation oscillator. You can see here, I made another video about this. I'll link that in. And... Um, but you can see that I got a whole bunch of batteries here generating about 150 volts with all of them in series because that's what you need to make a neon lamp oscillator, relatively high voltage. Oh, and I got the uh, micro ammeter in series with the battery just showing how the, the current changes. You can see that thing operates on high voltage and low current, whereas this thing operates on low voltage and high current. The, uh, the neon lamp oscillator is in the microamp range, whereas this one, I have analog milliammeter here on the 15 volt power source, and that's showing an average of about two and a half milliamps or so, two and a half to three milliamps. I'm on the five milliamp scale. And of course, lower voltage, 15 volts, instead of 150. So right now, I got the WSB2433, and of course, you guys probably aren't going to have that on hand, so let me replace that with the 2N2222, 
and you can see it's still flashing, still a little bit faster, but nonetheless it works very well. Now if I can find a 3904, there's one. See, very good. Still, this one oscillates even more, but it still works very well. And also, I have, I do have a resistor. It's just a one, one ohm resistor and a scope probe just to measure the current through the LED. So let me switch over to that. So we're at, a, we're at 10 milliamps per division. And you can see how it's jumping up about four and a half divisions. So 45 milliamps at the peak. Okay, I zoomed out here so you can see the whole setup and see the range of operation here. We're at, again, with the 2N3904, flashing that LED down there, and I'm at 15 volts. Let me turn down the voltage. So at about 14 volts is when it stops flashing. And turn up the voltage, frequency goes up. And it's actually still works pretty good, even up to 25 volts. Still flashing all right. And a much higher frequency too, at about 10 hertz or so. So let me turn that back down to 15, and we're at 1.6 kilo ohms. Let me just turn this down. So now we're at 600 ohms, and again flashes relatively fast until we get to 300 ohms. That's when oscillation stops. So let's find the upper limit here. Yeah, right about there. I'm at 2,300 ohm. Put it up to 2,400. Still flashes a tiny bit, but surely at 2,500, we get no more oscillation. And here's one last little thing I thought I would try. I figured I could make a AM transmitter. So you can see I've got this circuit down here. That's the 3904 um, oscillator circuit and I have a 1000 picofarad cap on it and I just played around with the resistance until I got it to oscillate. And it just so happens to oscillate at 754 kilohertz about, which is of course in the AM range. And um, on the scope, this is, I got an AM, I've got, I mean, AC coupled, and from here to here is a little less than one volt. So that's the, that's the voltage across the transistor. The AC voltage, that is. There's still a lot of DC. And I also put in series with resistance, the primary of a cheap Radio Shack audio transformer, the, one, the 1,000 ohm to 8 ohm audio transformer. And then on the 8 ohm coil is an 8 ohm speaker. So it's really, really weak. It's not, I mean, I could, and if I spend more time, I could probably make a better AM transmitter. But let me just show me zoom out here and turn on the radio see there is it's not tuned but right here that's tuned into to the frequency and if i touch the resistor right here it goes out of changes to a different frequency if I touch these components. And the speaker Let's see if I tap this if I tap the speaker let me try talking into it. I'll put the mic in front of the radio. Hello. Wow, I guess it does work. That's cool. So there's a little something you probably didn't learn in school. This is my basic electronics textbook that I had 
when I was an undergrad. And you know, you learn about all the the basics of transistors and and the different IV curves, but you can see it's always forward bias. They never tell you what happens in reverse bias unless it's a diode. But transistors understandably, you know, try to keep it simple, but it really would be nice to to learn some of this stuff earlier. And of course you learn about oscillators like the Weinbridge oscillator, Hartley and coal pits and um, and phase shift oscillators, you know, with the there's a nice single transistor oscillator, but you got all these other components here. I wanted something absolutely simple, just like this one. All you need is resistor capacitor, reverse bias BJT. Um, I found the 2N2222 and the 2N3904 both work. Others may work, others will not work. Um, I'm not sure. Also, the PN. 2222, which is the one in the plastic case, like this one here. That's the PN and the 2N. That's in the metal case, rated for slightly higher power. That's another something I never learned until just a couple years ago. I, I always thought they were both exactly the same, just different packages, but they do have slightly different characteristics. Anyway, that's my video on very interesting, very simple oscillator circuit. Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something, and please, I think this is really cool, fun circuit. Please spread the word and let other people know about this, this very interesting circuit that I just, uh, or this very interesting phenomenon of negative resistance when you reverse bias a BJT. Thanks for watching.